was announced. With me here in Westminster now are the ambassadors, both for Romania and Bulgaria, Konstantin Dimitrov from the Bulgarian Embassy and uh, Jan Shinga from uh, the Romanian. And thank you, gentlemen, both for being with me. And you both witnessed the Queen's speech. What was that like? I think we won it. Myself for a second time to attend the speech. It was very succinct, very clear, reflecting the priorities as we read them of the British government. Jon, I think it's your, your sixth occasion yeah, you've seen for it. For me, it was for the sixth time when uh, I have attended this impressive ceremony, I would say. And uh, every year is different, at least from uh, an ambassador point of view. Of course, it is a ceremony that mixed history, traditions with modernity and with top actuality. But, uh, and uh, by the way, I have uh, seen uh, uh, contemporary illustration of the 1523 state opening of Parliament uh, during the reign of King Harry VIII. And uh, it is amazing uh, how many visual similarities are between the 16th and the 21st century ceremonies. Let's talk about the, the content, the legislation, because both of you gentlemen will be aware over recent months about your countries becoming part of our political debate here. What, what are your thoughts on that? I am not allowed as an ambassador to comment publicly uh, on the British government's policies. But if you have in mind the uh, immigration topic, I didn't see any connection between Romanians and uh, the immigration policy because as members of the European Union, Romanians are fully entitled to travel and work abroad in any other European country and this phenomenon is called mobility, not immigration in Europe. But, but restrictions are due to be eased for, for both of your countries by the end of the year. When one looks back at the experience with Poland where the estimates were all wrong, are we likely to see many people from your countries come here, do you think? Well, I think that uh, the issue uh, we talk about is the removal of uh, restrictions or to the access to your labour market. It doesn't have to do with immigration per se. The Bulgarians are contributing and have been willing to contribute to the growth of your national product and that will be the tendency. And we don't expect any major rise in the number of people willing to come to work to the UK after the 1st of January 2014. You don't think it'll be like we experienced with Poland? Because there is a market difference between the situation then and now. Now eight countries from the leading nations of uh, Europe will uh, remove the outstanding restrictions, including Germany, Benelux, France, etc. It's not only the UK, the focal point of a possible interest. Uh, it, of course, has been part of the political debate, as I was talking about. Nigel Farage actually went to Bulgaria only a couple of weeks ago to actually find out and see if people were coming. In terms of Romania, he has talked about a crime wave in, in London, a Romanian crime wave. Has he been right or wrong on that? I would comment only on the British Prime Minister's uh, speech on immigration on 25th of March, because Prime Minister David Cameron has described Romania in the United Kingdom as people that work hard, pay taxes and are highly valued by their employers which is, is the message both of you, I think, uh, want to get over in terms of just the importance of migration in terms to our economy here. Uh, th that, is, that is true. Um, our compatriots are contributors to the growth of your economy. They're skilled people. Also, they, they are very well educated in your own education institutions. That's an asset, I think, both to the UK and to the image of the UK around the world, including in, in Europe. Ambassadors, we're very grateful for your time. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you. On